this is Danica Fallen for ESBR Boxing in Manchester. It's a pleasure to be joined by the Tartan Tornado, Josh Taylor. Josh, just first of all, how are you? You've been on the men for the injury for the last six to eight weeks or so. Yeah. Uh, how's the recovery process going? Yeah, it's going well now. Um, obviously, still not, still not there. Still got a bit of way to go to. I'm fully recovered, but I'm back on my feet now, which is good. I'm able to do a little bit of boxing training, sort of statically, not really moving too much around and stuff but yeah it's getting there you know I'm still not able to run and do other bits and bobs yet but it's getting there we're a bit ahead of schedule in terms of recovery and that so aye it's going well. Uh, it's good to hear Josh, uh, I'll cut to the chase, Teofimo Lopez from looking at the outside end it seems like that fight's going to be left for the last few days, uh, June the 10th, Madison Square Garden, yeah, yeah. I know there's probably a limit to what can you say but tell us what you can. Yeah I mean it's looking like it's going to be there, um, still waiting on all that, how you doing mate? Still waiting on all the rest to come through and the confirmation and things like that. So that's what's looking like next, um, which is great. It's awesome. You know, it's uh, back over in America again in a big fight, but this time I'm able to take people with me, my fans, my friends, my family, and all that. You know, so I, I'm, I'm excited for it and, a, and another huge fight, an iconic venue where all the greats have been. So I am I'm looking forward to it. I just want to get your thoughts, if you don't mind, on Teofimo, both as a fighter and as a person, he's quite polarising. Uh, not so long ago, he was being held as one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world after the yeah. Brazilian Lomachenko win, but the stock sort of declined, obviously the Cambosos loss and the sort of flat performance against Sandor Martin. He's come up with some strange comments, his relationship with his dad, yeah. his trainer. Just your thoughts on Teofimo, both as I say, as a fighter and, and as a person. Well, I think he's a great fighter. Um, obviously, he's went down a little bit in his last couple of performances. Um, <laughs> I think he's a little bit mentally weak um, from things that I've seen, but I'm not taking anything away from it. Uh, I, I don't know him, I've never met him, so I don't know what kind of character he is. I don't know how much of it is real, how much of it's put on. You don't know. So, um, I, listen, I'm preparing for the best Teofimo Lopez, you know, so, and the best Teofimo Lopez is an sensational fighter. You know, he's, um, he's explosive, he's athletic, he punches, he's quick. And he's got great skills as well, so ah, he's, he's, a, he's a top fighter. Uh, 100%. Uh, just like your thoughts, I'm speaking to Liam Smith through the week, and it was strange. We heard a few weeks ago that Ebank Jr. had activated the rematch clause, and it seemed like an announcement was only a matter of time. But Liam, it all went quiet for a bit, and Liam said that it looks like Chris and Conor Ben are going to fight potentially out in Abu Dhabi. Uh, just your thoughts on you know the fact that potentially Conor Ben, who's got this all hanging over him, uh, can mm -hmm. still go and land a potentially I don't know what seven, eight figure payday. No, uh, at least um, Liam, who had this rematch clause, is sort of left. I don't want to say clutching at straws, but you know, in searching for his next fight, and he's the one who won. Yeah, I mean, um, I think Liam's due a, a huge fight. You know, you know, he's um, he's been at the top of the game for a long while, for a long time, a long while now. So he's due one of these big, massive fights. Um, I'm not too sure what's happening with the the Eubank fight with uh, Liam. I don't know if it's going to happen or not. Um, says he's activated it, but I don't think he actually has. So. Yeah, I don't know if that one will happen again. Um, it's still a big fight because it, because it is a big good fight. And while the fight lasted, it was a very competitive fight, um, the Eubank and Smith fight. So, um, yeah, th th I think if that happened again, it's a, it's a huge fight again. You know, so uh, it's always going to be an exciting fight that one. But yeah, it's, it's quite it's quite uh, this whole other thing with Conor Ben and all that. It's frustrating as a as a boxer myself. Um, you know, you get two two positive tests and just gets brushed under the carpet because it's VADA um, but you pay for VADA like it's, it doesn't matter if it's VADA or whoever you get two positive tests it's it's not looking good and it's still not even it's, they're talking about I'm going to fight here there and everywhere for, for huge massive amounts of money you know for me, me myself personally I'm on the, the whereabouts programme um, I've got to Put in where I'm staying. If I forget, if I forget to put in where I'm staying in the morning, and they show up, I just say I've stayed at my auntie's house or something like that, and forgot to uh, a date where I'm staying or waking up and all that, and they show up at my house. That's a strike against my name, and I've had two strikes against my name before because of doing forgetting to do it, you know. And it's like fuck, you only get you only get three in a year, and you're potentially banned. So then, if you get banned, then you've got that. Uh, Castro, on you, you're a drug sheep, you know, and it's, I've got to say where I am going to be, what, when I'm going to stay, where I'm going to be, how long for, what time I'm going to be for, an hour slot, every, every morning, all year round, 365, you know, all year round, so it's very, very frustrating, I'm getting scrutinised a lot as a, as a professional boxer, and uh, 
he gets two, two failed tests. Uh, the fight was just about to go ahead. Only got pulled out on the last, the last couple of days uh, before the fight. And they're talking about my fighting uh, in the next couple of months. It's just, uh, I can say, uh, it's no nice. It's very frustrating. That's all I'll say. And Josh, just last one because we've been past him here. Uh, Fury Usyk, it's the talk of boxing. It's not happening. Very disappointing. Uh, just get your thoughts. Yeah, it's disappointing. I was, I was, I was really excited for that fight. Um, as a boxing fan, you know, because um, I think that Usyk has grown into the the heavyweight division now. He's filled out a little bit now. He's putting a little bit of size and strength. And uh, his last couple of performances, well, his last performance against Joshua was very good as well. He looked like he was a little bit stronger. And uh, yeah, it, it was a a big historic fight actually. You know, one for Fury to become the the first heavyweight um, undisputed champion in the four belt era. Um, I think that's right anyway. Um, and then obviously Usyk to become the first ever two weight undisputed world champion, something that's never been done before. So yeah, it was a massive, a massive uh, fight in terms of myself for a boxing fan. So yeah, it's quite disappointing as uh, why it's not happening. But there's obviously reasons or good reasons why Usyk's decided to walk away. There's obviously a good reason for it. So uh, it's quite disappointing. Hopefully it happens in the future. Sadly, I'm going to join her, but Joshua, appreciate the time, brother. No worries, mate. Cheers. Cheers, man. Cheers man.